In 1935, the Bank of Canada Act was passed by a parliament creating the Bank of Canada, a bank owned by the Canadian people. From 1935 till 1974, this bank was used by parliament at virtually no cost and virtually no inflation to get us through World War II, to create the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Trans-Canada Highway, to finance the Canadian Pension Plan, EI, and National Health, along with many other fantastic infrastructure programs and social programs. However, in 1974, everything changed. The Bank of International Settlements was caused, for reasons we won't go into now, and they were, came to Canada and basically said, we want you to join, but you have to join under our terms, which meant no longer using the Bank of Canada to finance Canada. Well, back in, in 1975, our national debt was $22.6 billion, not very much, and owed to ourselves. Today, our national debt stands at just about $1 trillion. And your share of that, according to the nationaldebtclots.org, today stands at $29,904, and we're now on the 9th of September. So my question to you is this, are you willing to let these, this situation, this national debt, and this personal debt exist? Or are you willing to tell your constituents that you will fight on their behalf to reinstate the Bank of Canada as a financial supplier for the country of Canada and get rid of the national debt and their share of it? Which will it be? Well, we're concerned about the shift of borrowing um, going towards these private banks because, again, that's, again, giving uh, a lot of power to corporate with these high interest rates that we, as Canadians, are going to be responsible for paying. So I think, you know, it's definitely a case where we've got to come back to coming back to the Bank of Canada. We have to, uh, looking at that as our source of lending rather than these private banks. So going back, we, we've actually, we're, we're going backwards, we were actually further ahead in many respects in the 70s than we are now on so many things. And we have to look at what's not working and that's something that's not working. Mm -hmm. But would you advocate for for the government to change its ways, to go back and to create those, uh, that ability of the Bank of Canada to uh, lend money? Would you advocate for that? Yes, yes. The government of Canada should comply with the financing of government projects through the Bank of Canada versus private banks because the interest rates that we're paying to private banks are far too high. We're going to end up further in debt than we already are. It just keeps growing. We're paying $30 billion a year in interest. I know, it's just too much. Right. In, in my view, the government's uh, provincial, federal, municipal should be going to the bond, international bond markets and should be getting competitive prices. I don't think that uh, the government of Canada should be subsidizing these projects. Um, and I think that it is well, What do you mean by subsidizing these projects? You mean financing them? Fi financing them in a way that's not competitive. So, competitive uh, for whom? For c competitive on, uh, at an international level. In other words, when we go to the bond market, where we should be doing federal, provincial, municipal governments should be um, uh, 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 competing uh, the financing of these things interna internationally. And the Bank of Canada shouldn't be required to finance these uh, unless it is providing the best terms to the governments. Mm -hmm. Well, they can offer a, a loan at zero percent because they, uh, all they have is uh, the management of the bank. To, to, they don't need a profit. Whereas the Bank of Commerce, the Royal Bank, all the other banks, they need a profit for their shareholders. So how can, how, how can that be competitive? How can they not offer a competitive deal so, to a government? So if the Bank of, if, if the, if the bank of Canada uh, is, is uh, uh, allowed to um, uh, compete uh, in, a, in, a, in a competitive way, what I, what I would see the Bank of Canada doing is getting the best deal they can from the government of Canada because the Bank of Canada is separate, right? And we want to respect the distance between the Bank of Canada and the governments, federal, provincial, municipal. The reason we want to respect that distance is that we want the Bank of Canada to be strong as well. Wouldn't it be the strongest if he lent, if the Bank of Canada lent the most to Canada, would be the strongest bank? It depends. It depends on the return on investment, right? They don't need a profit. They don't need a return. 
On but, the investment is our property. It's but if we money. agree that the Bank of Canada is at arm's length from okay. government, right, and that the, the idea is to have a strong Bank of Canada, <laughs> then we're saying the Bank of Canada needs to pay attention to its return on investment as well. And because we want a strong Bank of Canada. It's one of the things that makes our financial system strong. Well, I, I would say, first of all, that as a member of parliament, I respect the independence of the Bank of Canada and its ability to set uh, economic policy and the NDP would not be interfering uh, in the decision making of the Bank of Canada. You're talking about uh, a policy and mandate uh, debate that it really isn't on offer in this election campaign. We've put forward in the NDP what we think is sound fiscal policy, which uh, will result in balanced budgets uh, and we can achieve those through increasing corporate taxes, uh, ending the subsidies to fossil fuels. And so that's what we're really campaigning on. We're not campaigning on a change to the Bank of Canada mandate. No, the Bank of Canada mandate apparently is there, but it's not being abide by. Well, as I said, we are, we are not in the business as New Democrat MPs of interfering in the operations of the Bank of Canada. It was set up to be arm's length from Parliament and needs to remain that way. Okay. You realize that the governor of the Bank of Canada is actually an employee of the Minister of Finance. Therefore, Parliament has a say in the Bank of Canada. Well, Parliament has always maintained uh, an independence and a distance from the day-to-day -day operations of the Bank of Canada, and I believe that's the proper thing to do. Well, the Green Party's position is that it is still legal in Canada to borrow from the Bank of Canada, and we believe that the federal government and provincial government should be able to borrow from the Bank of Canada, but they should be able to do so under certain conditions. It needs to be fairly strict conditions to avoid hyperinflation. But the one drawback is that municipalities can't borrow from the Bank of Canada. And right now it's municipalities that are facing the greatest deficit when it comes to their infrastructure, you know, highways and sewage and water. So what the Green Party is suggesting is an iBank, an investment bank that would be a crown corporation, independent and autonomous. And how it would work is the federal government would borrow money from the Bank of Canada at a reduced interest rate, better than the banks, and then municipalities could borrow it from the iBank. And they would then get money at a reduced rate that would allow them to move ahead with those uh, projects. And you know what it means is you don't have to wait for the one-third, one-third, one-third agreement. You know, the provincial, the federal, and the municipal governments. So we think the solution to this is an investment bank, an iBank, that provides that buffer between the Bank of Canada and the municipalities. Why do you need a buffer between the Bank of Canada and the municipalities? Why can the municipalities not just borrow straight from the Bank of Canada? Because it means that you end up with the possibility of political interference and we would have to change the legislation to do that and there is a fear that you would end up with hyperinflation if you have that in-between bu buffer the investment bank then you're allowing the federal government to do it at arm's length mm -hmm. uh, there are many examples of uh, hyperinflation not happening when the bank of canada was actually doing it in the 40s and 50s and 60s so uh, uh, I hear a lot from uh, people that want to continue with the status quo of borrowing money from private banks. They say, oh, inflation, be careful because of inflation. But anyway. Argentina being a good example of that. Yeah. Did they borrow from the, their, yes. their own bank? Yeah, they did, and it caused horrible inflation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's one example, and uh, there are many other examples. I believe the, the, the Bank of Canada uh, needs to be nationalized uh, entirely. But it is nationalized. Well, I mean, in terms of, of the profits, going back to, to pay for uh, things like education, things like health care, rather than going into private coffers, as we see. Mm, okay. uh, average Canadians, uh, well, yeah, Canadians are paying $160 million per day just in interest payments alone to this institution, which should be serving Canadian people, and instead is profiting off the working people's backs. I mean, if we had this kind of money in the, in the budget, I mean, it doesn't take an economist to realize that we could have uh, all sorts of options available to us from, from free education to uh, better, more affordable health care, uh, better infrastructure, all the things people want to see in public services. Mm -hmm.